Today's video is brought to you by Lolly. Earn free Bitcoin while you shop online. Hey, it's Chris, and today we're gonna to be talking about everything that's new and good or bad in watchOS 6, and that includes new watch faces, new Apple apps, and yes, new and improved Siri, fitness tracking, and more. Very quickly, let me just mention, if you haven't checked out our second or third channels yet or our podcast, I'm gonna link those up down below. Don't miss out. We're gonna start this off by talking about the new and improved and enhanced Siri functionality in watchOS 6. So one of the cool things that you can do now is ask Siri to search for a topic. So for instance, if I'm on the go and I'm interested in nitro cold brew, which you know I am, I wanna learn more about it, I can say search topic nitro cold brew. And what it's gonna do is bring up the top web search results for that topic and then give me the option to open those web pages, which is pretty cool. You can open these web pages right on your watch and it does load a little bit slowly, I will admit but it's kind of worth it once you get in there. So I have loaded up Starbucks, their actual website, and checked out what they had to say about cold brew, for instance, on my watch. This is really useful. I really actually do love this feature because the less I have to take my phone out of my pocket to interact with it, the better, as far as I'm concerned, especially when it comes to trying to access some sort of information. And to be able to do that right on the watch and if I've got the LTE, which I do, I don't even need my phone. I could be out on a walk or a jog or something and the world is at my fingertips. Something else that's new with Siri in watchOS 6 is the ability to now ask what song is playing and it's gonna work together with Shazam to actually let you know. And again, this is good because I don't ever use that ever on my phone when I have to take my phone out and be like, what's playing? I never do that, but I'll actually use it now maybe on the Apple Watch. It's, it's basic, it's straightforward, it works. It's not a huge feature, honestly. All right, next, let's get to the new watch faces. And honestly, this is like the biggest upgrade for me in watchOS 6, I think. It's nice to have some variety because after a while, you interact with this thing every day and it starts to look the same. It can get a little bit boring. So it's nice to have some fresh looks, a fresh coat of paint. Let's talk about the California watch face first, which to me looks pretty serious and sophisticated. And there's several different styles for it. I do have it on the actual California look with the Roman numerals and the Western Arabic numbers like you would recognize mixed together. And I actually ended up liking this more than I thought I would. The way I've got it set up is that I've got two complications on there. Now the top one is pretty limited. You can only have like the date or things that are more related to time in that top complication, not just any complication. On the bottom, you have your standard circle complication and you can put anything that fits in that standard circle slot there. So I've got the date on the top and the drafts complication on the bottom. If you've been a subscriber, you know I love drafts on the Apple Watch because it's one app that lets me actually get some real work done, kind of like MindNode. And really, I could get by on that on a given work day. You need to know the time, you need to know the date, and you need to be able to get some work done in my case. Capture those thoughts and ideas. I can do it while looking good with the California watch face. Now there's also a circle style to the California watch face, and that's if you wanna use some extra complications, stash those in the corners, and I really didn't like that nearly as much. We also get the new solar dial watch face in watchOS 6. Now this one's pretty cool for business people, I think, and here's why, because I find it motivational and functional. So what it is, is it shows you where the sun is in the sky and really it shows you like the whole 24 hours of a given day. So what you're able to do is glance at it and see where the sun is at a glance and know, okay, I have this much time left to get something done today. And that really honestly is pretty motivating. So that's why it's motivational, but I say it's functional too because you do end up getting those four complications in the corners as well. So all that stuff is good, but it's not my favorite looking watch face. I think it's just a matter of personal preference. Some people are gonna love it. And for me, it's like, it's okay, but really it is motivational. Another new watch face that we got is the gradient watch face. And I'll say this about this, it looks very nice. What I like about it is that you can match it to your band, whatever color your band is, and get those working together and in sync. And that's great. If you're wearing your Apple Watch more as like a fashion statement <laughs> rather than like using it for the data or whatever, or if you're using it uh, more for the notifications, you don't really care about what's on the watch face. You just want it to look good and be able to tell the time. This is that. It's basic, it looks cool, and it tells the time. We also have the new modular compact watch face, which this one's kind of weird to me. 
because what it is is a take on the modular watch face, but you actually end up with two less complications than you get with the original modular watch face. So maybe some people <laughs> want less complications. I don't know. It's kind of weird for me too, because it's the only watch face where that red notification dot on the top, if you have some notifications, is not centered. So I guess versus the old modular look, I guess you would use this if you just like the look of that clock better. And you can change it from analog to digital, whatever. Finally, the last one that I wanna cover is the new Numerals watch face. I've been checking out the Numerals Mono, which basically just sticks a big number right on your watch face, takes up the whole watch face, and it comes in two styles. You can have it all filled in solid, it tell you the hour uh, by the number, or you can just have it kind of as an outline, which is be a little bit less uh, obvious and a little bit more understated. This is another one that's really great for matching up with the color of your watch band. If you just want something that kind of looks good or goes with a certain outfit or something. Also, you know, for people that struggle with telling the analog time, then this is useful too because you already have one thing taken care of for you, the hour. You glance at it, oh, it's nine, and all you have to worry about is that second hand there the minute hand. Now, ultimately, did any of these new watch faces end up being a new favorite for me and something that I'm gonna end up replacing my old original favorite watch face with, which was the Siri watch face? I have to say, while I like the variety, like I already mentioned, the functionality of that Siri watch face is just too strong for me to ignore. I love having stuff being able to contextually appear throughout the day, depending on what time it is, where I'm at, and none of these other watch faces can do that. So I may you know, find myself switching between them every now and then, but I think my go-to still for me is gonna be that Siri watch face, even though it is getting a little bit old now. What I really wish Apple would do, instead of coming out with different modular looks uh, like they've been doing, is come out with some different Siri uh, watch faces, some alternatives to that one that we have. That's what I'm really excited about for a future release. Next up, let's talk about some of the new apps, starting with the new Apple Reminders app. That has a whole fresh coat of paint. It looks a little bit different now, and it's built to match the new uh, iOS 13 Reminders look and feel. And I have to say, I've really been enjoying that update on the iPhone, so to see that come over to the watch has been great for me. I'm gonna say it again, because I've said this a million times, but my life basically runs on the Reminders app, because if something occurs to me uh, or something comes up, I make a reminder and I, it's just over. I forget about it. My watch reminds me whenever it's time. I don't dive into to-do lists or the calendar very often. And so having this better organization on the watch is great. Apple finally brought the Voice Memos app to the Apple Watch and Watch OS 6. We're a little bit late to the party here in the past, this is good, it's good to have, honestly. It's great because Apple stuff always just tends to just work instead of a third party thing. But what I've been using in the past is just press record with this big red record button and that's been good, but it's good to have this functionality on your watch. Like one time I got fired and what did I do? I fired up some recording uh, functionality on my watch to make sure to capture that whole process. So if you need to capture something on the spur of the moment, it's good for meetings or just things that weren't planned that you need to remember, um, this is good. And it's good to have an Apple version. Also, Apple finally brought the official calendar app to the Apple Watch. Now, this isn't a huge deal. There's been some third-party alternatives in the past, but it's nice, again, and in fact, I like it because it's more simple than the one which I have been using, which was PCalc Lite. That one was just, it required a few too many presses to get to the functions that I wanted. I just want something really super uh, simple and basic, and that's what you get here. You also get a tip functionality. So that's how probably most people are gonna use this. You're at the restaurant, calculate the tip, just hit the tip button, and done. You can adjust a little bit. So it's useful, it's a really tiny thing, it's not something to get super excited about. Something that's brand new, though, is the new Noise app. And this is, this is kind of a cool thing, but it's not something that's gonna have a huge impact. Here's what I mean, at least for me. It's cool that you can monitor your environment and see how noisy or loud it is and how that is going to impact your hearing health. But at the same time, if I find myself at a concert, that I really wanted to go to and paid to get into, I'm not gonna look at my watch and be like, oh shoot, that's bad for my ears, I'm gonna leave. You know what I mean? It's kind of like screen time. When you see that you've gone past what you should have been on your phone for that time period, you don't just like stop usually, right? You're not like, oh, okay, 
that's enough screen time for now. And I think it's gonna be the same thing with this hearing app. Still, it's impressive in that it works really well. And I really like that live complication. So if you're more excited about this than I am, and I'm excited about it, I'm just not really gonna get a lot out of it, then that's gonna work great for you. Apple also is giving you the option to listen to your audiobooks that have been purchased through Apple's Books app on your Apple Watch, which is nice. But for somebody like me, since this didn't exist already, I've delved deep into the Audible ecosystem. And that's where all my audiobooks uh, are. And so if I want to access audiobooks, I'm really defaulting to Audible. And I'll link you up to my video about is Audible worth it down below because it's highly recommended actually, but delve into that video too. So it's cool that it's here finally, I guess for some people, I'm not gonna use it too much. One big question I have as we wrap up this section talking about Apple's new apps on the Apple Watch and Watch OS 6 is where is the Notes app? I really desperately want the official Apple Notes app to be available on my wrist. I mean, I can definitely use third-party solutions like Drafts or MindNote to an extent, uh, Bear is on the watch, but it's not the same. I find myself coming back to the Apple Notes app and you can go check out my Apple Notes video on the iPad for some of the reasons why I found it awesome. And I need to make an update on that because I've been getting even more into it than I have in the past. But I've tried a bunch of different Notes apps and I keep coming back to the official Apple Notes app for a variety of reasons. And this is a glaring omission that I can't get my Apple Notes on my wrist. Something new with watchOS 6 and Apple's health app is the activity trends. And what this is, is your watch collects so much health and fitness data for you. And before with your rings that you were seeing like your walking, your standing, your exercise time, that's great and it is motivating, but there's so much more beyond that. And so what these activity trends can do is say, here's a look at the big picture like all that stuff over the last year. And here's how your week right now is comparing to that. And it can sit there and pull out some really interesting trends and kind of help you get a better idea of where you at are at compared to like the same time last year, for instance. So this is a big, very good, huge thing, in my opinion. If you love the convenience of the Apple Watch, you might also love the convenience of today's sponsor, Lolly, which lets you earn free Bitcoin when you shop online. Just install the Lolly extension on your favorite browser and shop across the web like you normally would. Then when you're shopping on one of Lolly's 500 plus brand partners sites, you'll get a notification and then you'll simply earn Bitcoin for checking out using Lolly. So from Best Buy to Priceline and many places in between, Lolly makes it safe, simple, and fun for everyone to own Bitcoin. Check it out using the link down in the description. All right, so let's wrap this up with a few questions. Number one, is watchOS 6 enough of an update to push somebody who hasn't yet bought an Apple Watch into actually making a purchase? I think the answer to that is, Probably not because there's not like some big new feature like a new sensor or something. It's purely a software update with some new aesthetics, but there was already some pretty cool ones already like watch faces, for instance, and enough apps that there was enough functionality that if you looked at it before and you thought, mm, I don't know, I'm on the fence or that's not really for me, I don't think that's really gonna change here with watchOS 6. On the other hand, how much of a difference is watchOS 6 going to make for somebody who already owns an Apple Watch? Well, that's a whole different story because if you're already an Apple Watch fan, then you're getting what might feel in some ways like a whole new device for free. It's a free update, you didn't have to spend any money and you're getting a lot of new functionality and looks and it should be more of what you already like. Like I said, some variety in your watch faces. If you get sick of something, you can switch that up. That's always a good thing. Some new apps, uh, even though maybe they're sort of obvious things that Apple should have included a long time ago, hey, at least they're here now. And you can use those and rely on them. And when you get these first party apps from Apple, usually, like I said, those tend to work, just work really well. And sometimes you don't get that with the syncing or whatever, the bugs with third party apps. So that's a good thing overall. Now the watchOS beta, as far as I know, is only for developers. So there's no public beta of this yet, but it is something to look forward to, to be excited about. And you know what? We got some new Apple watches possibly coming out in September. So we'll see what that brings, but that in combination 
with watchOS 6 is a pretty exciting thing to think about as well. And of course, if you want coverage of all of that and, and ideas and tips and reviews to get the most out of all the upcoming Apple announcements, make sure you're subscribed. Again, don't miss out on our second and third channel and our podcast. They're linked up down below. Just more of the kind of content that you love from this channel in a different format. I'll catch you guys in the next video, but don't forget Daily Tech at Daily T-E-K-K on Instagram and Twitter. Go follow us there as well. Later.